How's it going everybody? Uh, today I have a really cool video laid out. I'm gonna go over the entire muscular system. So pretty much every muscle, where it is, what it does, how you can target it in the gym, and why it's important, and what function it serves uh, in your everyday life. Please like this video if you find it helpful. Uh, please share it with your friends or anybody who you think may uh, find the information helpful for them. Uh, it means a lot to me. And yeah, let's get started. Okay, so this is the muscular system. This is a diagram of your entire body. And I have all of the categories of muscles listed up here in 12 uh, broken down parts. So we're gonna work top to bottom. The shoulders are right here, those two dark orange um, circles at the top of your arms. The chest is in the middle right here. Your upper middle back is all of the orange on this side. Your biceps are the yellow parts of your arms on the front view, triceps yellow on the back view, forearms are the green muscles at the end of your arms. Your lower back actually isn't on the diagram, it's the white part right here, that's a muscle in itself. The abdominals are the orange eighth right here on your torso. The butt is the blue right there, quadriceps is the dark blue and purple on the front of your legs hamstring is this dark purple on the back of your legs, and the calves are the light purple at the bottom of your legs. So we're working top to bottom, starting off with the shoulders. The shoulders actually have three parts to them. The three heads are the anterior deltoid, meaning the front of your shoulder, the medial deltoid, meaning the middle of your shoulder, and the posterior deltoid, or the back of your shoulder. And the shoulder is responsible for a lot. Any way your arm moves is in response to what your shoulder is doing, which means extension, uh, adduction, abduction, rotating, lifting arm down, upside. And basically, if you want to get strong shoulders, you should target all three heads of the shoulder. The front deltoid is targeted when you do front raises with a dumbbell. The medial deltoid is targeted when you do medial or side raises. And the posterior head is targeted when you do plate pulls or face pulls. Face pulls are actually a really good exercise that I encourage you doing. It helps with your posture a lot. And this is how you target your shoulders completely. You can also do military presses, which work the entire shoulder. Okay, next we're gonna work on the chest. And the chest is actually comprised of two muscles pectoralis major and pectoralis minor. The chest is responsible for pushing and adduction. So pushing motions and then anything that brings your arms in towards the midline of your body is going to be your chest muscles. So if you want to target your chest muscles, you should be doing bench press, push-ups, pec fly, dips. The chest can be targeted in different ways based on how you grip the bar in certain exercises. So a very close grip is going to target the inside of your chest, the inside of your pectoralis muscles. Um, a very wide grip is going to target the outside of your chest, and then a neutral normal grip should target the middle line of your chest. Additionally, if you're going to do incline bench press, that's going to target the upper chest and a regular bench press should target the, the middle. Um, people do do decline bench press, which is when their body is um, declined and the weight is kind of up, pushing up and away from them. And that works, works the lower part of the chest. So depending on how you do the grip, your chest is going to be targeted very differently. Okay, the upper mid back. This is gonna be a big one. Um, the upper and the middle back are comprised of so many muscles your trapezius, your latissimus dorsi, or your lats, you've probably heard of those before, your rhomboids, your infraspinitis, and your teres major. You don't need to know all of these muscles, you just need to know what the back does. So the back is responsible for pulling motions and any retraction. Anything where you're pulling is going to be your back muscles. It includes a deadlift as well. If you want to target your upper back, you should be doing these exercises. Pull-ups, chin-ups, lap pull-downs, rows, 
deadlifts, back retractions, shrugs, which works your traps, supermans, the biceps are two heads, that's why the term bi comes from, the long head and the short head. Any function of flexion or curling or pulling is going to be bicep involved. That means that if you want to target your biceps, you need to do these exercises. Normal curls will work your biceps. If you want to target the short head of your bicep, you need to have the weight on the outside of your body. So when you're curling the weight, move your wrist laterally away from your shoulder, away from your chest, and it will work the inside of your bicep more. And then if you want to target the long head of your bicep, move your arm in towards your opposite arm, and that will work the outside of your bicep. Similarly, any pulling movement that is back related should work your biceps as well. Pull-ups, chin-ups, lat pull-downs, rows, any movement where you're pulling is going to work your biceps as a secondary muscle. Next, we're moving on to the triceps, and the triceps have three heads, hence the tri uh, prefix. Basically, the tricep is made of the long head, medial head, and the short head, and you target each head similarly to biceps based on how your arm and your hand is positioned. If you want to target the short head of your tricep, you need to have your arm behind your body. If you want to target the medial head, you need to have your arms in front of your body. And if you want to target the long head of the tricep, you need to have your arms over your head. The long head is the longest and biggest part of the tricep, so I would really encourage working on overhead tricep exercises, but they also require a lot of control and balance. And also keep in mind that the triceps are involved with extension, with pushing, so any pushing motions like bench press, dips, push-ups are also going to be tricep involved as the secondary muscle group. The forearms have multiple muscles and you don't need to know all of them. Basically, just understand the flexor carpi radialis. These are the wrist flexors and the forearm flexors and they can be targeted in a few ways. So your forearms, first and foremost, are responsible for flexion. Flexion of the forearms means grip, um, gripping onto bars, dumbbells, whatever. Your grip is what your forearms are responsible for. Um, flexion also means twisting your forearm and your hand up and twisting it in. So these are the exercises that you can do to get stronger forearms. Dumbbell wrist curls. Dead hangs. And farmer's walks. All of these exercises are going to improve your forearm and your grip strength. All right, next we're gonna talk about the low back. Um, we already discussed most of these muscles in the upper back, but the erector spinae is the lower back muscle right here, and it's really important for an extension of the spine. What that means is posture. I'm gonna get better posture right now as I'm saying this. It means posture, it means any motion where you're raising your body like this. So that could be a deadlift, a superman, machine back extensions. The low back is very undertrained in most people, and I talked about this in my last video, which was about how to get a strong core and strong ab muscles. It's so important for posture and for health in so many ways, so I would really encourage working on your lower back strength. Supermans, first and foremost, not deadlifts. Deadlifts are very heavy and very compromising if you do them the wrong way. So supermans would be the move. Uh, it's really important to train your erector spinae at least as much as you're training your abdominal muscles. I broke it up into the lower and upper abdominal muscles because they are targeted in that way. So if you wanna get stronger ab muscles, you need to do lower ab exercises and upper ab exercises. Additionally, the obliques are everything in blue around here, and they also make up your core, and they're more for rotation, for twisting, your abs in general do stabilization, flexion, and rotation. So exercises that target your abs are planks, leg raises, Russian twists, sit-ups,
And keep in mind, the abs are layers of muscles upon muscles, more so than any muscle we've gone through this far, which is why you can kind of see here the internal obliques, the external obliques, like there are layers inside the muscles that are superficial. It'll take a lot more training to see results in your ab strength than it will anywhere else on your body. The butt has two main sections, kind of like the chest. It has the gluteus maximus and the gluteus medius. To train your butt in general, you need to do the motions that it's responsible for with weight. The butt is responsible for abduction and extension. Any movement where your leg is rotating out from your body or extending is going to target your butt. Exercises that target your butt are squats, deadlifts, hip bridges, and hip abductors. Okay, next are the quadriceps. The quads are four parts as labeled by the prefix, and you do not need to know all these muscles. They're very long. The vastus medialis, vastus lateralis, vastus intermedius, and rectus femoris all make up the quad muscle. Basically, the quad is involved with extension of the leg and any pushing pushing of the leg. So in order to isolate the quadricep, you should be doing leg extensions. This is a machine that is usually in the gym and it's really good for targeting your quads individually, but also keep in mind that any compound movement that involves pushing or extension of the legs also targets the quadriceps. So the squat, which is a predominantly butt targeted exercise, also targets your quads. The same goes with deadlifts and lunges. The quads are involved in most big leg exercises that you should be doing. The hamstrings have three big portions, the biceps femoris, semitendinosus, and the semimembranosus. Basically think of the hamstrings as the biceps of your leg. They are involved with flexion and curling of the leg. So anything that requires your leg, or I guess your foot, to touch your butt when you're curling your leg up like that is going to be a hamstring exercise. This means lying leg curls and hip thrusts are two very big hamstring exercises that almost entirely isolate the hamstrings. But additionally, as we just said, quads, most big compound leg exercises also involve the hamstrings, like squats, lunges, deadlifts, depending on how you're doing them. Maybe sumo deadlifts are really good for hamstrings. There are two muscles in the calf, the gastrocnemius and the soleus. As you can see on that diagram there, both are responsible for pointing your toes and flexing the foot. That's what the calf does. Um, flexion, specifically plantar flexion, so the flexion of the foot or the pushing of the foot down. Basically, the calves are worked when you are standing on your tippy toes. And these are the exercises you can do to get stronger calf muscles. Standing calf dumbbell raises or machine calf extensions. The calves are one of the smaller muscle groups in the body so they do not need to be trained as much as the abs or the quads or anything like that but they shouldn't be neglected i hope you found this video helpful please like if you liked it and i'll see you in the next one i have some more videos coming out soon I'm trying to do it every saturday so fingers crossed and yeah take care guys peace